So I'm going to be talking about a power automate flow that is the best one I've ever made because it brings my business so much value. I'm so excited to share it with you because any of you can do this right now and it costs very, very little money to run. And we're going to be using AI and not AI builder. So it's going to save us a little bit. And the best part is you're going to sound like a human. This isn't theoretical. I'm using it in my business right now. What I love about it is this flow is helping people. It's saving our staff time. And if I can get a little greedy, it's making us money. The next one is, this is all just one flow. In fact, we're gonna build it all live right now. It is this right here. We zoom out. All of you are gonna be able to do this. Super straightforward, but the power is in what it is giving our uh, potential customers, or in my case, students, because that's who we teach. So. What problem are we trying to solve? The problem I noticed with emails is they all sound like this person, especially with AI these days, they're all so robotic. If I'm interested in a cooking class, they usually send me an email of welcome to the cooking class, blah, blah, blah. If I don't respond to this email, I suddenly get a second email saying, hey, Sean, did you get our last email? Humans don't really do this. They don't really send two emails in a row and they don't send them on the same subject as separate emails. So in this case, I'm already suspicious. I don't think that a human wrote it. And what this causes, since I don't feel like this is special, I don't feel like the recipient made it personal, I, I don't really want to respond to this person. So this company is potentially losing my business. And this was the problem I was trying to solve. And this is what I expect to see. I expect that when um, they send me an email and they want to check back on me, they're going to respond to the th same thread. Now, I know some of you want to argue with me. Some of you are probably like, Sean, I send two emails all the time. Well, what are you talking about on the same subject? I want to get their attention. Maybe you do. Well, in that case, do you ever do this where you start a thread and you start messaging them and then you send a brand new thread on the same topic? I don't think you're doing that. And the reason for this is unfortunately how a lot of mail platforms are built. This is MailerLite, MailChimp is the same thing, is they have some flow that looks like Power Automate, it sends an email, and then it waits a day, and then it checks if the person has opened the email or not. If it hasn't opened the email, it does all this stuff. So what does this turn into is this. You're getting a bunch of emails. We've all been there and you just you don't believe that this a human is doing this and that's where things get ruined. So what's the solution to this? Well, what we need to do is use a little bit of Azure AI Studio. And for the sake of time, we're just going to quickly blow through how to set it up just so you get it high level. But it's super easy. All you have to do is come into uh, Azure, type in Azure AI services. Once you have that, just hit the create button. Once you hit create, this is my favorite part. The pricing tier is standard zero. Do you know how much this costs? Zero. All of you could be doing this right now and be leveraging AI and all the APIs they offer you. There are limits to that. And if there's time at the end, which there won't be, we can discuss those or you can send me a chat on how you can expand your quota. But the next point is once you have your Azure AI service, uh, you go into the studio and the first thing you do is you pick which type of AI model you want. Now, you have a few options here, and I think I went a little too fast. And the first one is you can choose from like ChatGPT, you could choose from Mistral, you could choose from all of those options. But here's the thing that confused me. Once you choose your uh, uh, language model, you can come down here to deployments and see what you've already deployed. You can also come in here and click deploy base model, this is the same menu. This kind of threw me off at first. This is just two ways to get to the same thing. Now, some of these models are a lot cheaper than other ones. So if you're not running a lot of complex processing, pick a cheaper one. You can run a lot more operations and not worry about it. Now, once you have all this ready to go and then you confirm it and it's running, you can come in here into the chat and we're going to jump into the real demo here. I just wanted to show you that once you put in what your AI bot is doing, so I just typed in, you're an AI email responder, that's your identity, that's your job. And then I'm gonna come over here and hit show JSON, and then right here, this text, 
we're going to come back to it. So hang on with me. So now what we're going to do is if we go into our actual flow, the first thing that's happening all the way up at the top is when a new email arrives and I want it to be looking for this subject because I have this fake course company where we sell power automate and baked goods. We're solving that problem you all want. You want to learn power apps and how to make muffins all in one place. So that's what we're solving here. So when I receive an email from someone and that person puts in the subject of power uh, platform and baking course, I'm going to start to have AI respond to this person. And the first thing I'm going to do is when you come in here to email body, this is key. Go into here. Do not select body. It's super tempting, but there's a ton of text. There's HTML, there's CSS, all kinds of things. You don't want all that. It's going to eat up your quota. Instead, you're going to come down here and select body preview. That's going to give you the key text you want. Once you have that selected, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our course details. So in our case, our overview is in Bake Automate. This Power Platform course helps participants do blah, blah, blah. What do we teach? We teach Power Apps, we teach Power BI, we blah, blah. Oh, and we also teach how to make cookies, bread dough, whatever it is. And you don't have to hard code this. You can just do this as a proof of concept. Connect it to SharePoint, connect it to Dataverse, sky's the limit, wherever your data source is. The next thing, once we have our course details, here's where the magic happens. We're going to come in here and we're going to go get our Azure API URL. How did I get that? Well, that's located up here, where if we hop into here and then we go under deployments, and then right there, here's our target URL, here is our API key. Now, I know I'm showing you all the API key. Don't worry, I'll delete it after this demo. So type in API key and make sure you select the post method. Now, here's where things get fun. Remember what an I said system and text earlier from the video? That's what this is. I'm just doing the exact same thing. And in here, what I'm doing is you are an AI email responder that blah, blah, blah. Here's the syllabus for a course. I'm just going to select the same thing I did earlier. And then thing where things get really special is we hop down here and I said, read the following email and answer the sender's questions. Now, prompting is key here to get it right. Only the information provided for the syllabus. Do not make up any external information. We do not want them sounding like AI. Stick to the script. The next one is uh, using only one sentence, explain why they uh, this would be beneficial. And, oh, here it is. Invite them to purchase the course. I'm giving them a call to action. I'm answering their question, and I might get them to potentially purchase or join something. Here is where things fall apart. You have to say you must specifically mention something from their email. That's not enough. You have to give chat GPT or whatever your language model is an example. So down here, I said this course would be great because we cover brownies and Power BI. But you will only mention brownies and Power BI if they talked about it. It's like you're talking to a five-year-old. So once you get all those details in here, and then at the very end, I say, here's the original email. That's the preview I sent earlier. All right. I'm... Uh, David's going to help me, but not yet. David, one second. So in here, I have an email where I already sent, where I said, hi, I'm curious if your program offers Dataverse and SharePoint, and you cover muffins and cupcakes, or just one or the other. All right? So I sent this, and then our response that we got back from it, if we zoom out just a little bit, we come into here, it's going to give us, well, this annoying JSON to deal with. Sorry, they're down here. And this is hard to read. So all I did was add another action here that says JSON, and then all I did was parse it. Nothing too interesting there. But what the response looks like is this. Let's compare. We sent, hi, I'm curious about your blah, blah, blah. And we put, thank you for your interest in our uh, baking course. The course syllabus does not specifically mention Dataverse or SharePoint. So now this person might be thinking there's like a human involved. We're not trying to trick them, and we'll get to that in a second. And But right now it says like it is answering their question. It is taking into account what they're asking us. And then down here, we believe this course will be beneficial for you because it combines the credit, blah, blah, blah. And then, but it is a little high level. So this is why you want to uh, give it specific examples so that way it doesn't kind of keep things high level like this. And then it obviously at the end tries to sell them the thing. Now, 
All I did afterwards, and this is important, is once we get down here, what we want to do, and this is the first mistake I make, you do not want to do send an email. If you send an email, you're just you're the same problem as all the marketing tools that spam people. What you want to do is come into here and do reply to an or is it reply to an email and down here under message ID, you want to pick the actual uh, message ID that came with Outlook that is right here. And then you're going to be good. And then from there, once you have your message ID down here, you delete all of, you come in here under the code view. Let's get rid of this. And I'm going to come into here and then select the, um, where is it? The JSON response. All right. I'm going to put that in here and send it. What does this look like if we actually ran this and we got all the way to the end of it is right here where I've already ran it. Here's what it looks like. Hi, I'm curious, blah, blah, blah. At the very end, thank you for your interest in back uh, Power Automate, but it is not regarding your baby. We covered cupcakes in depth during week four while muffins are not specifically detailed in the syllabus. We're answering their question. It is made this course be beneficial to you because it blah, 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 and then it shows them what it is. So this is great. Now, all of you should right now be completely doubting this because you're like, I don't want AI automatically sending me emails. I don't trust AI. It might make things up. It might get it wrong, and you're absolutely correct. So the solution is, if you were looking at Kosei at Suparna's demo, she was doing the same thing. If we come into here, and all we do is we add an approval. We add an approval that's like, hey, here's the original email. Here's what we plan to send. So it's like, don't let people get this blindly. I want to make sure something is going on. And here's some secret sauce I'm going to give you right here that I have not put on my YouTube channel. It's just for all of you because David and Luis have been so awesome. If we come down here to the reply email, we don't just put in the output it gave. I'm going to come into here under uh, dynamic content and I'm gonna go down to see more, and I'm gonna click on response comments. Response comments is gonna let me inject some personal uh, messaging into this. David, if you can please fire me an email so all these lovely people can believe this actually works. On its way already right now. Cool. So while that's coming in, I'm going to hopefully we'll get a message here soon. Sometimes it takes a little while to actually appear, but I'm going to come into here and then I look at this is generally what it looks like is course inquiry email from whoever this person is. This is just me. I'd like to email. I'd like to learn how to make Canvas apps and I'm interested in tiramisu. OK, and then I read what ChatGPT created and I could look at it and I could say, OK, this is good and I can hit approve. Or I can come into here and add a little more spice and say, um, my favorite dish is tiramisu. I'll ask the creators to add it, something like that. So then once I hit this and hit approve, now it's going to add that personal touch to my emails. And luckily, we're unfortunately running out of time. So David, I'm sure your message is going to come in shortly as I explain this final thing. But what the ending response ends up being is something where uh, we get more personalized things like, and we'll be adding SharePoint soon. This is what I wrote. So now, is all of my email completely AI automated? No, and nor do I want to. But a lot of the email drafting is done for me. I just have to hit approve or hit reject. And that's been critical to our business because uh, this baking power platform example, um, it's not trivial. We literally, I have a company and we train people to become solutions architects and we begin with email. And this is the problem we try to solve and it's really helped people out because we can process people a lot faster if they want to join our program. Now, uh, I'm at the 15 minute mark, so very quickly, ask not what AI can do for you, ask what AI can do for your customer. And super thank you for David and Luis in the community call for having me and I'm done talking. <laughs> awesome, awesome job, Sean. Um, I, the email was sent. It shows that sent, uh, and and we do have a couple minutes. If did it show that it came in? By the way, uh, let me see here. Um, blah blah blah. Sure, from um, ah, I did. Yeah, can I show it? Do we have time? Yeah, yeah, we've got a minute or two. Feel free if you so we can help close out the cl uh, completion for everybody. There we go. 
course in core email from David. And then what do we got here? We got, does this course cover Power Apps Components, how to make delicious cheesecake? Hi, David. Thanks for your email. Oh, man, I personalized it to you and wrote nothing here. Thank you for your email. Uh, this course does cover Power Apps, including by, however, we delve into various baker cheesecakes is not explicitly mentioned. Bork, bork, bork. Cool. Okay. And uh, you have a booming voice. Have you thought about podcasting? So I could throw that in here. And then now we have this personal relationship where I've read this through, but now look at this. Like four seconds of my time and boom. And now David might actually be purchasing my baked goods and power platform course, which I got to make. So there it is. Thank you.